To understand dividing fractions, let's just think about how you would explain this to someone in, say, year one or year two, who doesn't know about division. You'd probably say, this is asking us how many twos there are in eight, or you could say, let's take eight and let's divide it in half. In other words, make it into two parts. Either way, you're going to get the same answer of four. Now, let's start with that same explanation of how many twos there are in eight, because I think that one helps us here. If we're now asked this question, we can see that what it's really asking us is to say, how many halves are there in eight? We'll picture eight whole pizzas, okay? You're picturing that? It's food for the whole family. There's quite a lot of pizza there. How many half pizzas are there? Well, each pizza has two halves in it, and there's eight pizzas altogether. So you're going to have, that's right, 16 half pizzas. Now, we worked that out by just thinking about how many halves there were in eight, but there's an easier way. Just as with this question, there's another way of doing it. We could say, what is half of eight? Okay, now half of eight is four, isn't it? Can you see how this question and this question are just asking the same thing, but around a different way? If we're taking eight and we're dividing it into two equal parts, we're halving it, aren't we? And we're finding half of it half of the eight. Well, just the same way, we can turn this one into a multiplication as well and make it a lot easier. Now, what's the trick? Well, the trick is that if you're dividing something by two, that's the same as multiplying it by a half. And here I'm going to switch these around to illustrate my point a little bit better. You guys are quite comfortable knowing that three twos is the same as two, two threes, right? You can always switch around the order when you're multiplying. Well, let's switch these around and say we're going to do eight times a half. Now we need to spot that dividing by two is the same as finding half of something. So we can change a division. If we don't like division, great news is we never have to do it again. We can always multiply instead if we want to, but there's a disclaimer. If you're going to change division to multiplication, then you have to take the thing that you're dividing by and you have to take its reciprocal. Now a reciprocal is a bit like flipping a number upside down. If I take the number two, and I call it 2 over something, I need to call it 2 divided by 1 because 2 divided by 1 is still 2, right? It just looks a bit like a fraction now. Now, if I flip this number upside down, what I'm going to get is the 1 on the top and the 2 on the bottom. So this is called the reciprocal or the multiplicative inverse, long word. So the reciprocal of 2 is a half. So what we need to do is change the division to a multiplication sign and then flip the second term. Now, what do I mean by the second term? Is this the second term? No, that's the first term. This is the second term in our number sentence. We flip it. Now, if there's nothing on the bottom to flip, then we can give it a one. Okay, so we flipped it. So could we do the same thing here? If we didn't want to do eight divided by something, we we're like, I hate division, too hard, I want to change it to multiplication, that's easier. We can do it. We start with the eight, we change the divide by two times, and we flip the half. Now when we flip this, aren't we going to get two over one? Yep, and two over one, that's really just two, isn't it? It's just a fancy way of saying two. And what are two eights? 16. See how we got the exact same answer? Now, this works every time. Let's have a go at dividing something by three. Let's take a simple thing that we know. We know that six divided by three is two, because there's two threes in six. But we could now practice and say, can we ask this another way? If we don't want to do division ever again, can we times, change the division to a times and flip the second term? Well, how are we going to flip three? Three is really three divided by one, isn't it? That's just three looking fancy. When we flip it, we get a third. Well, that makes sense. Dividing something by three, that's breaking it into three parts. And that is finding a third of it. And what's a third of six? It's two. So we can see it works. Does it work with a tricky one? Six divided by a third. Now that's a harder question, isn't it? How many thirds are there in six? Quite a lot, okay? If we don't want to do it that way, we can say, hey, I don't like divide. I want two times instead. But to make up for it, I need to flip my third. And what happens when you flip a third? You get this which is really just three in disguise, isn't it? Six threes, well, that is a much easier question than this one. 
but the answers are the same. So if I want to know 6 divided by a third, I say, well, that's equal to, and I can set it out by saying, that's the same thing as 6 times 3, and that's 18. And that's how I'll set out the working for something like that. Now we can do, we'll need to write this down. This is our take home method. Change the division to a multiplication sign. Flip the second term. And if it's got nothing on the bottom, give it a one. Okay, you might want to write that down as well. Now both of our examples had us dividing by a half or dividing by a third. But what happens if we have a similar problem and a slightly more complicated fraction? Well, we've got a method to do it, but before we just throw our method in straight away, let's make sure we really understand why it works. Here, we changed our complicated problem into a much easier problem, which we're much more able to find the answer to. But let's just think through what we would have done here if we didn't know this workaround. We would have said, how many thirds are there in the six? Picture six pizzas. How many thirds of a pizza are there? Well, there's three thirds in this pizza, another three here, another three here. And if you've got six pizzas, clearly you've got six threes. So that sort of thinking can get us the answer, even if we didn't know to just automatically times and flip. Okay, what about if we've got six pizzas and each person wants to eat two thirds of a pizza? How many people can we feed? Because if we're only looking at how many thirds of a pizza there are, we could feed 18 people if they're just getting a third of a pizza each. But if each person is eating twice that, because they want two thirds each, it makes sense that there's only going to be half as many of those in six. Why? Because they're twice the size. So if we could feed 18 people with a third of a pizza each, how many people are we going to be able to feed if they want two thirds each? Clearly only half as many. So nine makes sense. And sure enough, if we look at our new hack, that gives us the answer quickly and easily, we're going to say, we don't like division anymore. We're going to times and we're going to flip the second term. And now we've got six times three, that's 18, over two, because really this is a one here. So six threes, one, two, we get 18 divided by two, which is nine. Or if we'd used our method of simplifying first, we could have said divide this in half, divide this in half, and now we've got three threes on the top to be nine and one times one is one on the bottom, nine over one, either way it's nine. So we really should be quite convinced now that this hack is going to work every time. So is this going to work just the same with algebraic fractions? Absolutely. So if we have something like seven X over six divided by a quarter, looks hard, not that hard now. We've got a workaround. We're gonna do seven X over six, times, we we'll change the division to a times, and then we're going to flip this fraction, so it's going to be four over one. All right, what do I do next? Look for things that can be simplified, seven and six, no, four and one, no, four and six, yes, they're both even, I can halve them. Let's halve this one, halve this one, and now I've got seven x times two, that's 14 x, and on the bottom I've got three times one, that's three, and I'm finished. And a question that looks really hard is actually quite straightforward to do with this method. 